And Kamala is at a dance party with Beyonce. Hey. Dance party with Beyonce. Hey. Dance party with Beyonce. There's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is home to some of the most talented, innovative, and ambitious people in our nation. Beyonce, Beyonce. And these Latinos, they love making babies too. Just know that. What's up, everybody? Tyra Berry here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Okay, so in case you haven't heard already, comedian Tony Hinchcliffe, star of the Kill Tony podcast, is in some hot water as far as the press goes because of some jokes that he did when he was opening for Trump at Madison Square Garden for the Trump rally. And I want to talk about this, but I'm of two minds about it as far as... As there's me the comedian and then there's me the person that obviously is voting a particular way and knows that right now the race is neck and neck and we're really trying to avoid giving the detractors the haters more ammo and this did not help but I do want to talk about it and take it apart as far as being a comic goes full disclosure for anybody that doesn't know for anybody that's new to this channel I've actually been a guest on Kill Tony three different times. I've known Tony for 17 years and it's complicated because there's a part of me that loves him like a bratty little sibling, but then there's a part of me that's also very honest about comedy and what he does when it comes to stand up, which is separate from his show, which is more like him just judging open micers. But I don't want to get too much into that right now. I just wanted to make sure that everybody's aware so you're not like, I saw you on Kill Tony and you were blah, blah, blah whatever you're gonna say people always have something to say online I don't mind but I did want to talk about this so what I'll do is I'll read what Forbes had to say really quick which is just a short blurb so don't worry that's not gonna take long at all and then we'll go over the video just the jokes that he is actually catching heat about and I'll tell you how I think this will affect the campaign and how I think this will affect Tony's career this is what Forbes is saying so far just so you guys have an idea of what's happening in the media right now as far as this particular story goes. Hinchcliffe, a roast comic who hosts a live podcast Kill Tony, opened Sunday's rally as one of many speakers before Trump and said, there's a lot going on. I don't know if you know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. I think it's called Puerto Rico. The remark was met with uncertainty by the crowd, leading Hinchcliffe to laugh and say, okay, we're getting there. Again, normally I don't follow the national anthem. Trump campaign senior advisor Daniela Alvarez said in a statement to Forbes following the rally, the joke does not reflect the views of President Trump or the campaign. The comment drew almost immediate criticism online from Representative Richie Torres, Democrat New York, saying on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter, as a Puerto Rican, I am tempted to call Hinchcliffe garbage, but doing so would be an insult to garbage. At another point in the speech, Hinchcliffe said Latino people love making babies before telling a raunchy joke, leading Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign to call it a vile racist tirade against Latinos. So that's what Forbes had to say. Now let's get into the performance itself. This is a good time for me to tell you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you want to comment, but you don't know what to comment, just leave something like, are you out of your mind? Or some variation of that. Because if you watch this channel, you know that the answer to that is yes. But I need to keep people wondering. So they're like, is he out of his mind? Why are they asking him if he's out of his mind? And the answer is because they know that I'm out of my mind. In this first clip I'm going to play, it's a little bit of a preamble like Tony talking about where he started and the fact that he's here now. And so let's watch that really quick. And I'll tell you guys the way that I think this went down. Wow, isn't this special? 17 years ago, I was sleeping in my car behind the comedy store in LA, and I'm proud to say this is my fourth time performing at Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena in the damn world. The American dream alive and well right here. This is very different than where I'm used to performing though. I'm used to nighttime with people drinking, not so many babies in the crowd, and people that are obviously only here for Lee Greenwood tonight. 
Okay, so I'm going to make an observation really quick that's kind of inside baseball, but it'll let you guys know kind of what's going on. I think he mentioned the babies and Lee Greenwood and that part because what I would imagine happened is when he goes to the comedy store or he's performing here in Austin or he's doing one of his Kill Tony shows, he usually comes out with a lot of bravado. So he will come out and do the like everybody praise me, sort of like a pro wrestler type thing. And then he'll do like the congratulating, like he really plays it up. But what I would imagine happened was he got on that stage. Not a lot of people knew who he was because they're there for a Trump rally and there probably isn't a lot of crossover. I'm sure there's some because with him being part of the Rogan sphere, as they would say it, I'm sure that there were some crossover as far as that goes, but it's not probably going to be the kind of audience that's just going to go crazy for Tony Hinchcliffe. And so what probably happened was he realized that he wasn't getting the reaction that he thought he was going to get. Because if you notice, when he mentioned all the things that this is not like his usual performance, whenever you see a comedian do that, just know that that comedian is trying to give you excuses for why he or she may not do that well. And that's something I can tell you from experience. But what I think he should have done with that time is instead, I think he should have said something fun, like just to be clear, President Trump nor any of his campaign actually knows or has approved any of the jokes that I'm about to do. My views do not reflect the views of Donald Trump or the Trump campaign. Donald Trump just so much believes in free speech that they did not ask me to have any of this approved. That's what I would have said just to let the campaign off the hook, especially if I knew I was going to do something like what Tony ended up doing. Because if you notice, this isn't like an off the cuff set, nor would I expect it to be. So knowing what you're about to do and you're going to say some things that might reflect poorly on the campaign, I think he should have made some sort of disclaimer like that. So the first joke that he does that they consider is and in Texas stuff is really really crazy we're right there by a wide open border where are my proud Latinos at tonight you guys see what I mean? It's wide open. There's so many of them. See, and that to me is just a little bit of Tony being fun. And there's nothing wrong with that. He's just warming up the audience because he's going to have a little bit of fun with the Latinos. And again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with what he's doing right now, in my opinion. Because I know the way that the media will spin this and they'll be like, he said that all Latinos have snuck across the border. It's not that deep. It's just a silly little ask where the Latinos are and then give them a hard time about the the fact that there's a wide open border and that's how they got here. So for me, this one is a wash either way. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not particularly great either. It's not meant to be particularly great. So then this is where people, I'm sorry I'm laughing, but it's just, it's kind of weird to me because this is considered edgy to the average person, but it's just kind of standard comedy club fare, which we'll get to whether or not this has a place in this particular venue or not. But for now, I'll just tell you that that let's just listen to the clip and go from there. Believe it or not, people, I welcome migrants to the United States of America with open arms. And by open arms, I mean like this. <laughs> <laughs> He's waving them off and it is funny. And also, if you know Tony, even though he would deny it, I know him. He's got a lot of pride, but he's trying to get his confidence right now. And so he's doing that and trying to commit to it. But at the same time, he's not fully committing the way he actually would in a show because I know they shook his confidence at the beginning. I'm 99.9% .9 sure that the way I said it went down in the beginning is the way it actually went down. And that's why he's a little apprehensive. And right now he's beginning to get a little bit of confidence. And I don't think that there's any anything wrong with that either. That's kind of what people assume or think about Trump supporters anyway, is that it is a party that is not open to migrants or illegals. And that is true to a degree, but I don't want to go into the politics of it too much. I just want to say that I think Tony is making a joke that would resonate with Trump supporters and what the perception of Trump supporters is. I don't consider us to be at all in hot water yet. For a political rally, we're in warm water but we're not in hot water. But he keeps ratcheting it up, right? And so let's get to the next, because he's headed somewhere, so let's carry on. And these Latinos, they love making babies too. Just know that. They do. They do. There's no 
pulling out. They don't do that. They come inside just like they did to our country. And that's what they were talking about when they said a raunchy joke because he said they come inside just like they did to our country. I guess, but at the same time, innuendo, but then at the same time with everybody talking about like what kids are being exposed to right now, I could see the left spinning this and being like, okay, so you don't want drag queens in schools, but then if there's kids at a Trump rally and you have a comedian talking about inside that's completely okay and even though to me that's a ridiculous stretch I also do know the way that people work and politics work and people are always looking for something to compare like people on the right right now are comparing Tony's jokes to a joke that George Lopez did Donald Trump said he was gonna build a wall and George Lopez said you better build it in one day because if you leave that material out there overnight And I don't think it's the same, even though people on the right are right now trying to say that it's the same because it's still a racist joke. Well, you forget that George Lopez is also Mexican. Also, George Lopez doesn't outright say anything he's saying where Tony's is more in your face. And I'm actually going to say this, which is part of Tony's style. But at the same time, when that's your style, you got to deal with the consequences for that style. But also when he talks about Latinos loving to make babies that I would flag him on just as a comic because it's such a hack premise like everybody's been doing the Latinas get pregnant easy and Latinos love having kids and that's been around for years and years and years so one of the problems that I have with Tony's stand-up is in a lot of cases he just does go for the low-hanging fruit some would say Tony is low-hanging fruit I can neither confirm nor deny I'm just joking I really don't think Tony's gay even though everybody always jokes that he's gay. Like I said, I've known him for years. I've never gotten a gay vibe off of him. We have talked quite a bit and he's never opened up to me in any way. No pun intended. (laughs) While we're talking about raunchy jokes, that's not the way I meant that to come out. But he's never had a private... There are some people that have though. I could tell you some comics. Well, let's not do that. But there are some comics definitely that not everybody knows, but they have told me because I'm gay and everybody knows I'm cool and I won't say it on a YouTube video even though I will joke about it. But the thing with Tony is it's just kind of a hack joke to be like Latinos love having kids but again still not offensive Latinos will usually have a good sense of humor about it I still don't think we're in hot water I would say that we're in warm er water because once you start playing with stereotypes like that during a political rally things can quickly get misconstrued so in between he does a little I know it's not going well type of laugh <laughs> Like he doesn't have them quite where he wants them yet. Then he mentions Republicans are known for their sense of humor. (laughs) Republicans are the party with a good sense of humor. And he mentions free speech is under attack. Free speech is under attack, people. Which is, if you know, a battle cry for the right in a way, which is kind of a cheap tactic. But in case you guys can't tell, I'm giving you a peek behind the curtain of comedy. Tony pulls a lot of cheap tactics. That's what it is. Tony's whole thing is full of cheap tactics. And this is just a really good representation of the way he does that. Now, how you feel about that is on you. I'm not saying there's an honest way and a dishonest way to do comedy unless you're stealing jokes outside of that they're all tools sometimes you need a hammer and sometimes you need a hacksaw so even though I'll call out certain things it's just me noticing as a comedian what's going on while I'm watching this performance so then he does a joke about his mom that actually goes over really well my mom's a boomer in the state of Ohio and uh, there's no convincing her of anything she's eating the cats She's eating the dogs. They're eating the pets up there. Another banger as far as songs go. Why do all the good songs come from Donald Trump sound bites? I don't know. You figure it out for yourself. Maybe he's just funnier. And don't think I forgot about coconuts. <laughs> coconuts did make me laugh. But that joke goes over well. It is absolutely wild times. It really, really is. And, uh, you know... There's a lot going on. Yeah, there's him stalling like when he's like, it's absolutely wild times and there's a lot going on. This is not going well for him and he knows it. And again, I'm not clowning. I'm just saying what it is. Feels good in here. That's when you know it's not feeling good in there. (laughs) 
the feels good in here is the sign that it doesn't feel good in here. And now we get to the meat and potatoes, the franks and beans. Of <laughs> Sorry, but I do think this is funny, just the reaction for it. But I know that I have to somewhat take it seriously just because the reaction is very serious. And so we're going to go through it and I'll tell you why I think it all goes wrong. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. We're getting there. Okay, so the description that Forbes gave was accurate. They did respond with uncertainty. There was no denying that that's what happened there. And if you notice, there's also a bit of disapproval mixed in with the uncertainty. I'm sure that that was probably the Puerto Ricans and Latinos that drew a line right there. And Trump supporters don't want to be seen as being especially they're in New York at Madison Square Garden. So I'm sure there's a lot of Puerto Ricans in the audience and Puerto Ricans very much do love and take pride in the fact that they're from Puerto Rico. They have the Puerto Rican Day Parade. They mention it in songs all the time like Puerto Rico just playing. I don't even know which song it is that does it like that, but I love that song. I just don't know the name of it. But you know, Puerto Ricans are very proud to come from Puerto Rico. Also, a lot of people don't acknowledge or or even know that Puerto Rico is a United States territory. So even though it's not officially a state, it basically is the United States. And so a lot of mainland Americans don't treat Puerto Rico with the kind of respect that it should be treated with. People will go there and benefit from the tax credits and people will go there because it is beautiful and there's a lot of beautiful people there. But mainland United States doesn't really respect Puerto Rico. So that's also going to come into play when this kind of joke is done at a political rally. Also, when Hurricane Maria happened back in 2017, Donald Trump didn't really have the best response to it. And whether or not you think that was propaganda or them just mischaracterizing Donald Trump's actions at that time, that is what the perception was. So whether or not you want to acknowledge it, if you're doing a set and opening up his rally, you are representing him and his campaign on on some level. So you're representing a candidate that doesn't necessarily have the best rapport with Puerto Rico and you refer to it as a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean. That's probably not going to have the best reaction. So it's just not a smart play in this context. Now, is it on brand for what Tony does? Most definitely. But is it going to benefit the campaign that you're in essence there to help bolster? And the way that the media is already painting it is that Tony is a speaker or was a speaker for the rally, which he's there as a comedian and not as a speaker. But if you hear the same lie over and over and over again, that lie, as far as the public goes, becomes the truth. So this is very easily misconstrued. And I think Tony should have just vetoed that joke for this particular performance and maybe just kept it for his regular act. That would be what my advice would be on that particular joke. Also, I think he could have spun it and had some fun with it and made it into a misdirection if he had said, oh, I'm sorry, I meant Haiti or something like that because Haiti is already in the crosshairs of the Trump campaign because of the eating the dogs and the eating the cats comment. And so there would be nothing to be lost as far as pissing off people in Haiti. When it comes to Puerto Rico, we do have a lot of Puerto Rican voters that Trump really does need the votes of or would be very very helpful. And if you have voters that are on the fence and don't really know who they're going to vote for, even though I truly do believe most people know who they're going to vote for by now, some people really are undecided. So if there are very superficial voters that will go off of just one thing they heard, they might hear that that's what Donald Trump or his campaign thinks about Puerto Rico or hear a joke like this and be like, well, he already did us dirty back with Hurricane Maria. So maybe he really does feel this way if one of his speakers is saying that at his rally and I should just vote for Kamala. So these are things that I think Tony should have kept in mind when he was putting together his set list. But like I said, if he had done a misdirection there and gone for Haiti, he could have reversed the way that those jokes went 
and then did the joke about his mom immediately after. And I think that would have been better also comedically because it would have softened the blow for what he said about Puerto Rico. Because I do think that even though some people still would have been mad because he did it, if he had turned it around and made it Haiti, I think the Puerto Ricans would have been like, all right, you got us. And I think that it would have given him a better result. But my real opinion is he just shouldn't have done it because of where he's at. As far as in his regular life and his regular act, I would never tell another comedian what they should or shouldn't do. You can do whatever you want. Tony is obviously very successful. And so he knows what he's doing for his audience. And I wouldn't try to second guess that. But in this particular context, it's a no for me, dog. Tony has already responded on X, by the way, and what he said was, these people have no sense of humor. Wild that a vice presidential candidate would take time out of his busy schedule to analyze a joke taken out of context to make it seem racist. I love Puerto Rico and vacation there. I made fun of everyone. Watch the whole set. I'm a comedian, Tim. Might be time to change your tampon. Now, again, normally I don't follow the national anthem, everybody. Uh... This isn't exactly a perfect comedy setup. There's some people here. All right. Very good. So then as his save, he mentions that normally he doesn't follow the national anthem because he knows that that didn't go over the way that he wanted it to. And he's trying to give himself an out and also remind you that he told you at the beginning that this might not go so well. So this is him just being like, I told you so and kind of saving face. But also what's happening right here is, like I said, I've known Tony forever. And no matter what Tony tells you, Tony was never one of the comedians that would perform outside of the comedy store if somebody took him on the road then he would perform outside of the comedy store but I performed all over LA I would do every open mic every show every comedy club I was literally everywhere in LA and I never saw Tony outside of the comedy store and Tony really wasn't outside of the comedy store so when he performs outside of the mothership now because he went from the comedy store to the mothership and in between he was doing stuff in Austin which is like Vulcan and also the creek and I think I think those were like the two main ones in Austin. That was before I got here. Within three or four months after I got here, Mothership had opened and then Tony had a new home again. So he really is out of his element right now and it's showing in his behavior and in his reactions to what's happening. He's doing a good job of keeping his composure, but if you pay attention, you can tell that he's really not in his element right now. So now he goes into another bit that turns out to be, I would say his strongest bit it in this particular set. The other side's got a lot of crazy endorsements. Swift, Eminem, Leo DiCaprio, Beyonce. Every day the Democratic Party looks more and more like a P. Diddy party. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, that's what you guys want. And now he's finally getting his confidence. That was the, oh, okay, that's what you want. That is Tony actually getting his confidence right now. Which that joke to me is really, really funny. But if I had to guess, I would say that Tony actually didn't write that joke. If I had to guess, I would say that a very funny comedian by the name of probably wrote that joke and sold it to Tony. But like I said, that joke does not feel like Tony's writing. All right, heck yeah, it's a cool black guy with a thing on his head. What the hell is that, a lampshade? Okay, mentioning the black guy with the hat on his head that looks like a lampshade. Now we're back to Tony's actual writing. Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. Wow. I'm just kidding, that's one of my buddies. He had a Halloween party last night. We had fun, we carved watermelons together. It was awesome. You guys are, this is a groany little morning crowd, huh? Okay, so now we're firmly back in Tony's writing. A watermelon and black people joke is what Tony does. And one, that's hack. Two, again, especially at a political rally, that is not the place to do this type of joke. It's like Tony wanted too much to be Tony. And he's always calling himself a rose comic and he compares himself to Don Rickles. But Don Rickles, I'm a true Don Rickles fan, have been forever. And so a lot of Don Rickles jokes where like he would deliver them like they were throwaways where Tony will deliver a joke and act like yeah I said it but a lot of the jokes that he says just aren't strong enough to meet the challenge that his personality is responding to or defending 
And then by the end, he had won them over. So I'm not going to take that away from him. He really had won them over. He did a joke about Bill and Hillary. He did a joke about Biden and how we vote next week. God voted three months ago. But he had won them over by the end to where when he got off stage, they were pretty well in support of him, I would say. And again, I do give him credit for keeping his composure because he could have lost it. He could have melted down, but he didn't. The team from New York should beat the team from California, not only in this election, but in the World Series of Baseball, America's sport. I love you, New York. God bless New York. God bless America. Let's make it great again. I love you. Thank you. Welcome. See, and something like that where he closed is how I feel like he should have opened instead of being like, I'm this success story, because that's the way a lot of people will read that. And I know that he's not the type to really worry too much about how people feel about him. But at the same time, I know that he really does worry about the way people feel about him or think about him. Like he wants to be seen as this super successful guy. So of course he paints it like 17 years ago, I was sleeping in my car and it's like, girl, nobody cares where you've been. Nobody cares how many times you've been here. How about you be funny right now because we've never heard of you. And that's what I think a lot of comedians forget after they acquire a certain amount of success is with very little exception, like Eddie Murphy and Dave Chappelle would be two of the comedians that come to mind that are considered celebrities among celebrities. But in a lot of cases, comedians will always stay comedians. We are the court jesters. So for people to really see us as legitimate big time celebrities, usually isn't going to be a thing. Like what he was saying is true. Like they were there for Lee Greenwood. If Kid Rock were to show up, that would be a big deal. And I think that my point was made as far as comedians never being really seen as celebrities, even when they've acquired a huge amount of success, which Tony has acquired a huge amount of success. But Joe Coy would be a good example of that when he hosted the Golden Globes. Like in a lot of different circles, Joe Coy is a huge celebrity. But then you put him in a room full of celebrities and they don't really see him as one of them. Also, Chris Rock got slapped by Will Smith when he was doing the Oscars. Will Smith never would have done that to another celebrity. He did that because Chris Rock is a comedian and he knew he could get away with it. So I think that was part of the problem, like I said, like he came out with the mindset like I'm Tony Hinchcliffe and everybody loves me. And it was like, yeah, we don't know who you are, bro. So cool that you've done some things or whatever. Obviously, somehow you're here, but you're not what we're looking for in the way of a celebrity. So be funny, little man. And so, of course, as soon as this happened, a bunch of people sent me messages about it, which is why I'm doing the video that I'm doing. One person sent me my friend Ida Rodriguez, who may not be my friend at this point because I am a Trump supporter and she let it be known on her video that anybody that supports this, she doesn't want to be friends with anymore or whatever. Don't nobody speak to me if you feel that that is funny, if you think it's cute, if it's just comedy. That's not the platform for that, right? The platform for that is the comedy club, right? I'm a stand-up comedian. I fight for the rights of comedians to take, to say what they're gonna say. But when you go to a national assembly that is a political platform and you are there to speak and you spew hatred. Either way, I'm cool with Ida Rodriguez. I didn't agree with what she said, though, when she said that Tony was spewing hate. I agree with the second half of that. Yeah, it would be better for a comedy club, but I don't really think Tony was spewing hate. I don't think the level of clever in his jokes really meets up with the level of racial insensitivity that he's trying to pull off, because I don't really consider it and I don't get offended. I don't care. I just look at it technically as jokes. And I'm like, okay, if you're in Joe Rogan's T-ball club, then that will definitely go over really well. But then not always because I have literally seen Tony say at a set at the mothership when it wasn't going as well as he wanted it to go or people started groaning or not giving him the reaction that he wanted. I have literally seen him say the words, I'm Joe Rogan's best friend. And it's like, okay, you should never 
never have to mention who your best friend is to let the audience know that you're able to get away with the joke that you're doing. The joke should be able to stand on its own. You as a comedian should be able to stand on your own. So you shouldn't really need the bailout of I'm Joe Rogan's best friend in order to get away with the joke. If something isn't going over, you need to rewrite the joke or you need to tweak the joke a little bit more or you need to call your and see if he can fix the joke for you. But either way, I don't think that it's a matter of Tony being hateful. I think it's a matter of because of the limited experience Tony has outside of the particular clubs that I mentioned and performing for his audience in other venues, because now he does go all over the country and all over the world. And so he is used to performing in different venues, but it's still almost always for his audience. So because of his level of actual experience when it comes to different crowds, I would still consider Tony more of a person doing an impression of a stand-up comedian than an actual stand-up comedian. Also, like I was saying, if you really do care about a cause, sometimes even though you may consider yourself to be an uncompromising comedian, you should make those compromises. And I say that as a comedian that has gotten asked to do a lot of things that I knew that I wouldn't necessarily be right for and I felt that I could actually detract from or hurt the cause if I had done the show. And I'll tell bookers that honestly now would I say no to performing for Donald Trump no I definitely would not say no that would be a hard yes that would be a quick yes but I also would make sure that I did stuff that would not make the campaign look bad while we're in an election season like if he asked me to perform for him after the election is over and then people could be mad or not be mad but it's not going to affect him becoming the president or not becoming the president then I would go and do something pretty close to what I regularly do because I know that there's there's nothing outside of just a little bit of bad press that's going to come from that. It's not going to cost him the election. And I think that that's what Tony should have done was really thought about what he was going to do and how that was going to affect the election. But if you know Tony, Tony doesn't care about the election, even though that's why he's there and he will give it lip service. Tony cares about getting clicks and having people pay attention to him. Like right now, I'm sure he's absolutely loving this. And I don't think he's at all worried about getting canceled because he's already been canceled before for a situation he had with an Asian comedian where he had referred to that Asian comedian as a in the armor, if you know what I'm saying. And so he said a couple of things and it became a really big deal and he got canceled for I think a week or two and then he was able to bounce back from it so Tony has realized that him getting canceled will only make him bigger which is what I think will happen with this situation because Tony's audience does see him as a savage that's what Tony's known as and I'm already seeing people support it and as far as Tony being Tony I support it I don't have anything against Tony for doing this particular set I gave a technical analysis of it but you notice I'm not saying I'm offended about it and I'm not saying that I don't think he should have done it I'm just saying I don't think he should have done it in that particular circumstance and if he does end up inadvertently costing Donald Trump the election I think that might have a negative effect on him and also probably Joe Rogan in the club but I'm still not even sure about that people will probably be like yeah he lost it on his own so even that might not be a thing so this will have zero effect on Tony his podcast is huge it's getting millions of views every single week it's on YouTube it's his own thing well him and Brian Red Band run it together and it's not like he's going to get fired or there's any chance of him getting fired from his own podcast he records the podcast at the mothership which is Joe Rogan's club there's no way Joe Rogan's going to kick him out of the club or not allow him to record his show there this will only make him bigger because it's completely on brand for Tony Hinchcliffe there's people online trying to share tweets that are like one where he said does anybody want to go halves on a slave which I admit is classless but it's Tony that's the way Tony is and his audience and anybody that knows him already knows that so it's not like people are going to be like he said what there's almost nothing Tony could say that would make his audience turn on him because they already know what you see is what you get with Tony he's probably said worse on his podcast in the last three weeks or possibly even in the last week than anybody's going to find by going through his Twitter so it's like nobody cares Karen because there are a lot of Karens that are like is this you and trying to send him screenshots of things he said before and it's like hey lady we already know but I really don't think this is going to affect the campaign that much even though I know the media will try to spin it like it's dire straits for Donald Trump because this comedian just ruined everything and I really just don't see it that way I could be wrong but if you ask me Teflon Don will
will be able to get away with this one just like he has every other. Then when it comes to Latino voters in general, most Latinos, we do have a sense of humor about ourselves. I know Ida Rodriguez was talking about how you must hate yourself if you think this is funny or if you're still voting for Donald Trump. Slow down, Ida. If you're really paying attention to the issues, and I don't mind how you're voting, so I'm not trying to go on some Trump speech right now. I'm not going that way at all. But if you're really paying attention to the issues and what you say is important to you is important to you, whether you're voting for Kamala or you're voting for Trump, no matter what either of them says at this point, it's not going to make you change your vote. That goes for both sides. If you're voting for Kamala, there's a good chance that you think Trump is destructive to what we're trying to do as a country. And if you're voting for Trump, there's a good chance you think Kamala is destructive to what we're trying to do as a country. But let me know what you thought about it. Also, let me know if you felt at all offended. Also, if there are any Kill Tony fans that are watching this right now, I'm definitely anxious to hear from you guys. And if anybody wants to see my review on Joe Rogan's most recent comedy special, you can check it out by clicking right here on the screen. As always, this has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. They bought into his bullshit. Mm -hmm.